Am I interrupting you or can no, I? No, you're okay. What do you do? Can I ask what you're doing? Sure, sure. I can show you even if you like to have a closer okay. look. I draw even, um, I draw with coffee and tea. And with different kind of medium. Here you see actually I use the coffee for the background and for the inside I use wine. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wine. So, it's wine and coffee. So you, you, you're you going to have to say that again. You, you're. You use coffee yes. and tea. Exactly. So you, what do you do? You start with a blank start, piece of paper. Exactly. Have a closer look. You know what? I show you one what I just finished yeah. yesterday. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting you. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm good. Fantastic. Sure. Sorry. Just uh, have a closer look. Oh. So this one is a commission work for a collector from Hong Kong. He liked to have three uh, different paintings. And this is a one of the paintings, but I, this is not a second one. So what I finished for him, this symbolizes actually a kind of mirror for our society, where we are living in now. And you can see even it's really detailed. It symbolizes all of the fish are dying because of the oil uh, catastrophe. And you see here the bird is dying because of too much plastic in the water. And everywhere is the rubbish close to the slums and people living close to the factories. And we even don't let any kind of space for the nature. Yeah. If you go a little bit deeper inside, you see here by the bridge, there are few, there are few trees, but all of the trees actually dying. Yeah. And this is like made of coffee. You see, exactly. Now I can show you. It's a normal white paper. Yeah. It's just a normal white paper. And then you see I start first to stain it with coffee. And then I take a brush and use tea and the brush to get the coffee out. And the tea actually stays on it. And then I use black ink to make the outlines. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. I, I, I wish I had even a fraction of the gift you've got. Thank it's, you it's, so it's, much. It's, it's, it's so detailed. It is a kind of social critical art. How long does do. it take? This one used me now two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Like after Sorry. two weeks I finished this. Yeah. Every, day, every day drawing, five, six hours, and then after two weeks I finish it. Yeah. How, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I draw now since nine years, but since last year I show it to the people and I can make a living out of it. Since the first time I show it to the people. I can live now for my art and I can share my knowledge from my traveling. I'm traveling around the world now since five years and all of my experience, my first hand knowledge, I put it in my art. So the income, your your income, yes. this is your work. You don't you yes, don't work exactly. Exactly. for anything else. I you're you're since, an artist. Since a, since a year I don't do anything else. But I will tell you before in Australia for example I was living there now for two years. In my first year I had lived there for nine months in my tent. In in Australia, in, in Australia. a tent. I lived in my tent just to experience the nature and just to experience it myself. In Australia, I done in my first year. I done landscaping. I was in a construction work. I was a fisherman. I work in a jumping castle business. I was a waiter. I was a cleaner. I done a lot of different jobs. I like to figure out in my life what I like to do and uh, what actually makes me happy. So now I figure this out. I like to share my knowledge to the people, and that's why I do this just so with my art. I hope that people get more conscious about our nature and the environment. Nine years. Nine years. Nine years. Um, what's your good name, please? Martin Leipziger. Martin Leipziger. Yeah. This is my name. You can have a look on my Facebook. Okay. Facebook is the same like Instagram. And you see my website. Fantastic. And where are you from? I'm actually born in Germany, in Halle Saar. It's a smaller city, like around 200,000 people living here. Wow. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. So, very nice to have you in London. Very nice for myself to meet you as well. Thank you so much. Um, I very much. Do you have names for your art, or yeah. do you give, like for example, the one you have, yeah. in, which you explained very first? Yeah. What's the name of that? It's like a polluted city. Uh huh. Yeah. It's like a polluted city, I would say. That's the name you gave it. Um, for this year. It's okay. The, yeah, the title. And what about the others? Are you? Yeah, this you... one I call, for example, the rubbish whale. So I swim a lot in the rubbish when I am in the third and second world war countries. 
then I have to swim in rubbish sometimes. Oh, so it's a whale <laughs> yeah, it's made a whale. from ru rubbish. Exactly. It's morphing like the wonderful animals from the ocean coming out and morphing them to rubbish. Oh, and that symbolizes all of the rubbish in our ocean. And I heard a new uh, study in 2050, we will have more rubbish as actually fish in our ocean. If, we keep, if we keep doing what we're doing now. Yeah. You even can have a look here through. Your portfolio. This, uh, exactly. This is a, one of my... This are just a few of my paintings. I've done a lot more, but this I think are my favorites. This is a one experience. I've done spear diving here, so it's really sustainable fishing. Yeah. Here's the spear, here's a piece of rubber. You put the spear in the rubber and then you can shoot fishes. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. This, this kind of machines I call them the dreaming machines. Yeah. You see here more. Even I just use coffee and then I use baking around. So, I have to ask you, right? Yeah. You're using pen and paper, right? That's right. What if you make a mistake? That's the deal, that's the deal. If you make a mistake, then you have to work it out. But luckily, I don't do too many. You don't, you don't really make mistakes. You don't make mistakes. It's not more really happen. I mean, after nine like, years, you still, you still, like, I will really say it's, it's like happen, but it's coming much, much less. Now, I think no one... Go on, please. Sorry, I've like, taken over. How, like, before you start doing your work, do you, like, have a, in your mind how it's going to look? Yeah. You already have a whole kind of picture. Complicated artist pen and paper again on on um, YouTube, right? And Do you remember he, his name? I can't remember. But he was um like a tattoo artist, but he's also um, pen and paper. And one of the things he said or commented was that once he is absorbed in the actual painting process, yeah. it's almost as if he's taken over. Um, it's almost as somebody's guiding him or directing him. Is that how you feel when you do it, or is uh, that? It really depends on what for a piece of art I work in the moment. Yeah, I can just go through the flow, but I do more by this kind of machines. Yeah. Same like here, I just go through the flow. For Even like for me, it is a kind of meditation. Yeah, when I do this kind of drawings, for me, it's a kind of meditation. So your kind of. And when I do uh, drawings like this, then it's more detailed and more controlled and structured. Yeah? Because there's a, deeper, there's a deeper message in it. So, I like to give this message out in a good, in a good way. So when you do that, sometimes I watch singers, so when they're on stage, and they're singing and they've got their eyes closed, and you can just imagine that all they're thinking about is a song. They're not thinking about the stage, the audience, the people around them. Is that kind of what you do? Obviously, you keep your eyes eyes open, but you immerse yourself in the actual picture, so you forget everything around. Is that what happens to you? Sometimes, like for one or one and a half hour, I see so much of my painting that I even see and don't realize the people that I'm like I'm around. It can be good, it can be bad, you know. Like sometimes people like to have an explanation about my art, but then they can speak to me and then they wake me up, kind of wake me up, and then I realize, oh yeah. I'm actually here. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, thank you very much for saying a few words about yourself and your art. Yeah. Very much appreciated. If people want to find you, do you have um, an artist Facebook page? I, uh, All right. I and a card. A card. All right. A card and you can All right. I'd like to have a look here. Excellent. Yeah. Like this is this is my name. Then you see like here is my website and my email. My phone number is here still from Australia. Fantastic. And my Facebook and on Society Six. Yeah. Oh, I see. On Society Six, you find it on pillows, bags, on marks and other things. By this, by this painting, I like to symbolize the bycatch from the fishing boats. All of this kind of creatures we are having in the net when we are catching prawns. So they are going to a huge net, they are going on the ground from the ocean and dragging on the ground from the ocean over three hours and catching everything. Shells, crabs, fish, sharks, everything. And then we get the two huge net in on the boat, we pick out just the prawns, 90%, sometimes 95% going back to the ocean dead or close to dead. And we pick out just the prawns first and the rest goes just back to the ocean. That's what they call drag net fishing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it's called. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily they uh, forbidden now the mega trawlers, but still even the small trawlers. So after five weeks on the ocean, we had catch 11 tons of prawns. And you can imagine it would be 17, 11, tons. 11 tons of prawns after five weeks. And we was just a one boat. 
and then you can imagine 70 or 80 tons are just bikers and just live killed for plants. That's sad. And here I will symbolize if we take out all the species from the ocean, there will be no whale left too. I hope I get this kind of knowledge more out to the people and the people get conscious about our world where we are actually living in now. Where the food from your plate comes from, how it gets there. Exactly. And this is just the surface what I scratch you on, yeah? It is, it's really going further when we use fertilizers, all these chemicals, everything we are destroying. And in the end, we're killing ourselves. I had done one of my most detailed artwork uh, where I use five weeks, it's this one. You see, I show, show here the pollution, I show here the rubbish, and I show the chemicals coming from the factories. Everything comes together in the water system. We are catching the fish, which is poison, so we poison ourselves when we eat the fish. Uh, this is what I like to symbolize, and this is the reality now. It's nothing what I just fantasy or something like this. Yeah? This is our reality, and I like to show this to the people. Like how I said in the beginning, like my art is a kind of mirror for our society. So a lot of people do have diseases, and the unexplainable diseases, or symptoms, or conditions, but when you analyze it and look at it, it falls into place that you know you're 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 feeding yourself polluted foods and polluted drinks. Your mind is polluted because of the concrete jungle we live in. So we get depressed. Yeah. yeah, so people display the symptoms and the condition conditions of what they're being fed. Yeah. And physically, spiritually. And the best medicine is nature. When we are going back to nature, people are, get less depressed, people get happy again. Even like if you breathe in a forest, you will feel so much more energy and happiness in yourself as when you breathe the sturdy air in cities. Like we take in a third world countries and I live in a tribe. So always a little bit local. That's incredible. Oh which, like which if, I, if I live in a jungle, like in Vanuatu, in Papua New Guinea, in Solomon, in Fiji, then I always live together with the tribes. And sometimes, like in, like in Vanuatu, we even don't have claws on. We just have a kind of the bamboo belt. Oh and we take God. the skin from the tree and we put it here around. So we never have to wash claws. What did you, what did you eat? Just this. Roots, roots. Because when you go up I'll further, <laughs> when you go further, <laughs> you probably live. No, when you go further in the mountain, you don't even have fruits, so you have to eat roots. Then. So was it very remote tribe? Really, really remote. I even now, after five years, I'm so lucky. I found a tribe without religion and without school. So they just lived like thousand years ago. They don't use anything what the Western culture is using. So there was no no watches, no mobile phones, no money, no, no, no TV, civilization. no. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. So you you kind of you kind of fed your fed your artistic abilities with that more and as well? Being, you know, I just was looking for a place where I can be 100% connect with nature, where even people are living since thousands of years doing the same thing, living wonderfully with nature together. Yeah. And it's hard to find now in this time of places like this. I was lucky I found places like this now and I had a wonderful time. I just have my backpack and the trust to the people, then I go in the jungle, I have to make a map that I find the way from village to village, I just write it down and then I have a, like a map that I don't even have actually. Custom stories, so when I live in the jungle, when I live by the tribes, yeah. then the tribes they are telling me about their stories, and like the legends, you know, the old, old legends. And they tell it normally their kids, the kids tell it and their kids and so on. But for now on, the kids don't listen more so much. So they even will not tell the stories to someone else. So this part of culture, this part of history will be gone at some point. That's why I see there's a mission for myself too, to keep this kind of history. So when I'm in these tribes, when I'm there in the bush, then I start to write them down the stories and later on I make a painting for it. 
here. This is what you've done. Um, people they are believe in Vanuatu, on Tana, it's a smaller island where there's a volcano. Yeah. They are believing that at one time was the wind so strong took the sand from the beach and make a kind of human being out of it. Yeah? Yeah. The wind came from the side and make a human being just from the sand from the beach. And I use here the coffee from the Tana Island. So they have a they have an active volcano there. And this and this active volcano uh, spread out everywhere, ash and everything. Yeah. So actually, the coffee grows on the top from the ash from the volcano. That's oh. why I get this kind of reddish color. Yeah. Okay. So every time when I travel in different countries, I get different coffee and different tea, which gives me a different note of this brownish. So it's color. even more specific it to is. each country. Totally, wow. totally. That's incredible. Yeah. And this is a piece of history. What is now on the paper. It will be maybe never written down somewhere else, but I start to draw it now, I start to write them down and like to share this part of history to the world. So, do you mind explaining some of these, what, what your um, yeah, prints sure. are here? If you like to. Actually, for example, here, but this one um, is actually one of my favorite paintings and it symbolizes our current situation. So, like a few hundred years ago, we started to build houses um, and now we see our houses like take a lot of space for the nature. We have a lot of nature left, but we build a lot of houses. So I think we are now in a kind of balance. But when we go over, we are not more. Yeah? So for now, we are in a kind of balance, and that's why I draw this as a yin and yang. Yeah, you see here is oh, the city, I see, yeah. and here is the nature part. This is our current situation. Yeah? I like to show you this one, because I put them in a series. Oh, this is our negative future when the nature is falling in part, when the world is falling in part and this is our positive future when we let come over the nature yeah? this is like I put the three together in a series that people get more conscious what can happen right. when we keep doing so what we're doing or we let come over the nature again and appreciate again more our nature so this one is in the middle there uh, yeah this right. is our current situation and this yeah. negative and positive future and what can happen or, exactly. or what is happening maybe exactly if you just have a one second more i just like to explain you like yeah, another please, one sir. thank you here you see i draw the ends and i draw a human being in the middle by the ends, you see, they are running around, like how our ends are doing. But I like to symbolize that humans are coming more and more like ants. We're coming from home to work, from work to home, from home to work. We are coming more like ants. But I will symbolize we are human beings. We have to slow down. Uh, we have to get a slower movement and we have to just observe things sometimes and don't rush like an ant. Uh, we are creative, we are, you know, so we can think, like we are really different to ants, so we should not uh, live like ants. This is how things used to be, what you discovered, rediscovered when you were with your tribal exactly. community. Exactly, they are um, having a really slower movement, not like the yeah. people here, the people here are always in a rush. Like, like you said, they're rushing like ants. Exactly. Constantly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it's terrible what what society makes people do, what it does to them. It is uh, making them work yeah. like slaves. That's it. And people don't see it. They don't wake up to it. Exactly. But when they meet people like you, sometimes I inspire it, quite a lot of people. I can tell you. You you, yeah. you do. You definitely do because yeah. you're you're free. Yeah. Yeah. You're not you're not enslaved. Your 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 artistry and your artistic skills. Have freed you. They freed you from the shackles of society. Exactly. And like I said, and so and so my motivation, and so my will to see different cultures and to live different lifestyles. This will free me too. That I see actually I'm a human being. I don't have to be in this system all the time. I can think for myself. I can be creative. Everyone can do this. Like a main thing, what I tell everyone is just follow your own dream. People tell me, oh, I'm jealous how you're living. Don't be. Do it yourself. You have your own dream. You should follow your own dream. Sure. Uh, thank you again. That's okay. God bless you. Huh? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for your time. God bless you with what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Very, very unique.